Hey good people, it is Tashara from Politics and Fashion here today with my five step wardrobe reset plan. As you can see, I got a coffee. We're just gonna chit chat about showing up as our best selves in 2024 and for me it starts with our wardrobe. Go grab you a beverage girl and meet me back here, all right? Let's get started. Now I have a whole wardrobe reset series that is scheduled for the first part of 2024 because I feel like it's the time of year where we are all thinking about our goals, what we accomplished last year, what we didn't, what are our challenges, etc. And our closets may also be a place where we are looking to improve things and to just get a little bit more anchored and centered in our personal style. And as a result, I am here to provide support in that arena uh, here on YouTube, on social media, and also on my blog, and of course, the private community. And so check me out all over the interwebs if you like this type of content. But let's specifically jump into this idea of a wardrobe reset, what it is, and why I think it is helpful for you. Very simply, I am defining a wardrobe reset as going into your closet, taking a hard look at what you have, and really having an honest and open conversation with yourself about what you need, what you don't, and most importantly, how to consume more consciously for the new year. My goal over on this little corner of the internet, of course, is to always share with you all some principles around what I think it means to shop with greater intention and to have less, but to actually increase your style. So as a result, I know there are many folks who look into their closets and they just feel overwhelmed. They have too much or they have too little. They have things that no longer fit. They have things that maybe don't go along with their lifestyle any longer. They have things that are not interchangeable. They have too many trends. I mean, we could go on and on about the different kind of diagnoses that I could give to someone who is struggling with their style. Um, and the reason I think that I am... Um, capacitated maybe to have this conversation you all is because number one I have been a content creator for the past 12 oh girl 13 years now am I that old wait a minute let me let me think about this thing hold on let me do some math <laughs> okay it's, it's it's definitely been 13 years it's been it's been it's at a big age it's been 13 whole years I've been out here on the internet uh, sharing personal style advice and tips. I also am the author of an ebook, How to Declutter Your Wardrobe and Curate a Style That You Love. And I worked in luxury retail for Saint Laurent for over two years. And so I happen to think that uh, my opinion on these matters is informed by, by quite a bit of experience and research. With that said, if you are struggling, struggling from any of the afflictions that I just named, or you just want to feel your best as you go out and you make the most of the new year, these five tips are going to be helpful. If you are listening to this passively, don't worry. You don't have to stop and get a pen and a pad or any of those things. I will have a link to a free downloadable resource that is for you on the blog. Let's get started with the first tip. As I mentioned before, I believe a wardrobe reset is a perfect tool for people who are at the point of transition in life, whether you have changed career, whether you have decided to create new habits around shopping, you have new financial goals to meet, your body has changed, whatever it may be, you're looking at your closet and you're thinking to yourself, it could be better. Here is where I would start and the first tip is to declutter. You all already knew that was coming. If you were not new around these parts, you knew I was going to say declutter, all right? Uh, for me, that is one of the most important things that we can do, one of the most important gifts that we can give ourselves, honestly, in a society where we are so frequently encouraged to consume and to consume very low-cost items that maybe are not the best as far as the quality that they are. We tend to have a lot of stuff in our closets. We have multiple closets. We have bins in the garage. We have bins under our beds. We have bags full of clothes to give away, but they're still in our trunk because we never actually gave them away. I'm, I'm talking to you. See, you saw, I'm, I, you didn't know that I knew you had that bag of clothes in your trunk that you've been riding around with for six months. Saying you're going to give them away, but you haven't done it. You, you, you haven't, okay? What I know as a result of doing this work for a very long time is that we have things in our closets that don't fit, that are no longer our style, and that are like beyond repair. 
that should have gone to the fashion graveyard a long time ago. So as a result, decluttering it's not just about, you know, I'm trying to get you to become a minimalist. No, far from it. I don't even think you have to have that mindset to have a wardrobe that you love, quite honestly. But what I do know is no matter how you define your style and your style pillars I talk about in my ebook, you have to know what is in your closet to get clear on your style. And that is why I say that we can actually have less and be more stylish. We all know people or even ourselves at certain times in our lives that have a lot but still struggle to know what it is that brings them joy as far as clothing and accessories are concerned. Don't be that person, friend. Get in there and declutter. Go back to any of my previous videos where I get more specific about how to do this. After you declutter, the next step that I think is really important is to actually inventory what you have left. And when I say inventory, I mean actually inventory, okay? I want you to write these things down and or take pictures. I want to know what is it that you feel like you have that you can put on today that is going to make you feel your best. Now, I don't mean, you know, you're kind of like lounge clothes going and running your errands clothes, but the items that are stand out in your wardrobe that you're going to wear to work, that you're going to wear to date night, when it's time to put it on, when you're going to put that thing on, what is it? How many blazers do you have or do you have any? How many great pair of jeans do you have or do you have any? I know for me, I'll get into this mindset where I'm like, I don't have no jeans that fit. But then when I actually go through my closet, I have three pair of jeans that fit me perfectly well. Do I need more? Probably not because I don't wear jeans every single day of the week. And this is why having that inventory is so important because very often we have a mindset around what we don't have instead of reflecting on what we actually do have. And then number three, I want you to determine your style pillar. For me, style pillars are the ways in which people show up to the world. It is kind of your visual representation of who you are, is your visual calling card. My style pillar, as I define in my ebook, is elevated simplicity. That means that I like things that are a little bit more refined, a little bit more sleek sophisticated. I tend to veer more towards neutrals. I don't do a lot of patterns or pops of color. I mean, today you couldn't tell that, but my wardrobe day to day and my staples tend to be in the neutral category because for someone like me, interchangeability is what is most important. And even as a content creator, I don't like to have things in my closet that have not been worn or, or that have tags on them. It brings me anxiety. And so part of that elevated simplicity is also the simplicity, knowing that what I have, I actually wear. But there are other style pillars as well. Outside of elevated simplicity, other style pillars that I define are adventurous, more is more, and blank slate, okay? And each of these are defined with their strengths and their challenges in the ebook. I bring them up here, however, because what I really want to highlight for you all is knowing your style is imperative imperative as it relates to a reset. I cannot underscore that enough. Too often we are being influenced. We are liking what celebrities wear, what Miss Betty down at the, the, the Deaconess board at the church is wearing. And there is nothing wrong with admiring the style of someone else. But what I have learned is that the second I go outside of my my pillar, my style pillar, and I begin to consume based upon what other people have or what I am being distracted by if I'm having a squirrel moment, then what happens is I don't wear the thing, okay? What happens is I don't feel great when I put the thing on because I have gone outside of actually what makes me feel great about myself and the way in which I define my style. And it doesn't mean that I don't step out and take risks. I think um, the dress that I wore during Art Basel, the uh, purple ruffle dress with the sneakers and the denim MCM bag, it's a perfect example of something that may not be like squarely underneath my style pillar. But what I want to really highlight for you all is that that is not a norm, right? I'm not taking those kind of risks day to day. And it also was for a very specific event where I felt like my style could be a lot more forward in that way. And so again, this is why knowing your style pillar is so important. Also knowing those strengths, knowing those challenges. How do you define your style, sis? Now we have decluttered. We have uh, taken an inventory of what we have. 
We have defined our style. Next, it's time to do an inventory of what's missing and decide on that list what is going to be on your shopping list for the year. Yes, I said year. Okay, we don't have to buy everything at one time. But knowing what is missing based upon your style pillar, I think is going to be a key to you feeling your best during this wardrobe reset. Because as you start to consume items, you will decide, um, I don't know if I need that because I'm actually not missing that in my wardrobe. Or I have 10 of those already, okay? And uh, I think about something like, for example, going back to the black blazer or a great high quality sweater or a great pair of boots, for example. Maybe it's an everyday handbag. If that is what's missing and it is on your shopping list, then you can start to kind of plug and play as things come on sale, as you find them on resale sites, as you go shopping at local consignment stores. For me, I do a relatively, I want to say kind of big shop seasonally. And even then, I don't buy nearly as much during the beginning of the year as I do the end of the year because I'm looking for that kind of sale season. And so what that means is I'm always kind of focused on what am I missing. If you were around these parts during the Black Friday sales, for example, or even Vlogmas, I was focused on things like sweaters. I was focused on denim. I was really trying to bring into my closet a bit more color for this time of year, all of which I accomplished. And so going into this year, those things won't be on my shopping list because I've been able to check them off based on what was missing in my wardrobe, okay? So once again, shopping with intention, curating a closet that we love really depends upon our ability to be very precise about these things in a way that maybe we have not been in the past. Last thing I'll say about your shopping list is once again, it is for me for the year, okay? Don't feel like you have to jump out here, take out a loan, a mortgage against your home, okay? <laughs> Max out a credit card because you're trying to have a great black blazer from Saint Laurent. No, ma'am. That is not what this is about. Of course, I want you to be able to have things that you love in your closet. This is not a channel that preaches minimalism to my core whatsoever. I am not a minimalist, so I cannot do that, honestly, um, in, in, in all seriousness. But what I do know is there is no urgency. I think between the emails that we receive, the ways in which Instagram ads are targeted towards us, um, the ways that our favorite content creators are creating content, we often can get kind of swept up in this spirit of bye, 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 bye. You know, I, I say that often. Leave that to NSYNC. Leave that. I'm doing this tonight. You're probably gonna, girl. Was, was it just me? Was I the only JT fan when he had that dog on that, that curly perm? I thought he was mixed. That was, those were the hits, okay? The boy band days. Bring them back. Um, nevertheless, it's not where we are. Listen, speak against that spirit of bye, bye, bye. I rebuke it in your life because we're going to make us a list, okay? And that list is going to be based upon what is missing and it's going to take, to take into consideration what we already have in our closets. And lastly, as you are thinking about what is your vision for the year, I want you to either create a vision board that is based upon your peak style, okay, what it is you want your style to encapsulate this year, or include elements around style onto a larger vision board. And that vision board can be digital, maybe it's on Pinterest, maybe you throw some pictures into Canva, you make it to your home screen on your phone. Or maybe it is a list of words that you put in front of you on your desk. Whatever it is, I want you to be very intentional around kind of creating imagery that reflects the person and the style that you want to have for the year. It goes back into, from for me, this idea of like seeing something and believing it and allowing for it to be true, holding space for it in your life. Let's say you want to look your best but you want to do so on a budget for this year. You know that that is a possible thing to do because trust me, it is. You can look your best at any freaking price point. 
Make sure that the things that you are consuming that are around you on a daily basis and definitely your vision board, make sure it reflects that, right? You were trying to put the best foot forward. If you were trying to ensure that, you know, your new body you embrace and you show love to, make sure you have those kind of images on your vision board for the year. Make sure you are following influencers, content creators that also reflect that. I think too often we are able to get distracted because once again, we are not clear on where it is we want to head and a vision board is going to help you with that. And that is it, good people. Those are my five tips for a wardrobe reset for this year. I hope it has been helpful. If so, let me know down below what you are going to get started with today, honey. What is the thing that you can do that is going to make you feel your best as far as your style is concerned in 2024? We are a community and I would love to know. In the meantime, make sure you click the link for the free download. Yes, I said free. That is really going to help you anchor yourself and your style for the year. I will see you good people across the internet. Peace.